live. We're there for you. ABC 4 News at 4 starts now. Thanks for joining us on ABC 4 News at 4. I'm Courtney Johns. And I'm Emily Flores. A Utah woman is calling out a Davis County judge for ordering her to give edited boudoir books to her ex-husband as part of their divorce. She's now sharing her story in hopes that no woman has to go through what she did. ABC 4's Jillian Smuckler joining us live in studio this afternoon. And Jillian, I know you sat down with this woman. What's she saying now? Well, Emily, she says she's humiliated. She decided to take those pictures years ago to try and get her husband's attention. Now, she thought being able to share these intimate pictures with him would help her marriage. What she didn't realize, though, is that they would be used against her. At first, you're shocked and you're like, this isn't happening. And then you kind of laugh because you're like, there is no way a judge is going to order that. Lindsay Marsh says she could have never predicted what her husband of 25 years wanted in the divorce. You're like, please ask for that in court. Please look like an idiot and ask for that in court. But what the judge decided to give him left her speechless. Super violating and embarrassing and humiliating. It's so unreal because you're like, how is this happening? It's like a really bad Lifetime movie. Marsha's ex-husband asked to keep the boudoir books she made for him years ago that have messages she wrote to him. The things I wrote were so important to you. Why didn't you save all the anniversary cards and birthday cards and Valentine's Day cards? All those things that I've written to you over the years. You didn't keep any of those, but somehow these are really important. While she didn't understand why he would want those messages, Judge Michael Edwards did. So he ordered Marsh to give the albums to the person who took the pictures to do whatever it takes to modify them so that any picture in lingerie or without clothing are taken out. But the words are maintained for memory's sake. And then that's not what happened. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Marsh says her friend who took those pictures refused. So the judge ordered her to give them to a man she didn't know to edit them instead. So I had five days to collect the books from the original photographer and drop them off to this new, this new stranger so that he could see these images because you can't edit without seeing the images. I was like, I'm going to jail. This is what's going to happen because I am not handing these photos over to somebody I don't know, some stranger. No, not happening. This is not right. After hearing the judge's ruling, the original photographer decided to edit the pictures by putting a big black box in front of her body so only the messages are seen. Even still, she says she feels violated. Those are like journal writings. Those are personal. Those are things a wife wrote to her husband. There's no longer a wife and a husband. She's now calling for change, saying no woman should have to go through what she did, especially since these types of pictures are becoming more common. You know, women's bodies aren't property for people, or in my case, these three men, my ex-husband, his attorney, and this judge, to decide what should be done with it and who should be able to see it. Now, while the divorce is finalized, Marsh is legally required to keep those albums until December. Now, this gives her ex-husband a chance to object to any of the edits made in court before they're allowed to be destroyed. Now, once the 90-day waiting period is over, Marsh tells me she plans to hold a burning party. Emily? All right, thank you so much, Jillian. Well, it's important to note we did reach out to the judge and her ex-husband for comment, the public information officer for the court, saying the judges cannot comment on cases. As for her ex-husband, we have not yet heard back.